we're going to look at what is probably the most basic derivation in simple harmonic motion. The movement of a block on a frictionless surface, or rather a mass on a frictionless surface attached to an ideal spring. Now we have two goals here. The first goal is to write an equation of motion for the system. And the second goal is to describe the period of oscillation. And to start out, we're going to draw a free body diagram and then state Newton's second law. Ordinarily, on my free body diagram, I indicate a force's direction graphically, and I just write the magnitude. But here, I remind myself with a minus sign that the spring's force is opposite the direction of the displacement. At this point, we recognize the crucial requirement for simple harmonic motion, a linear restoring force. It's a restoring force because F spring is always pointed toward equilibrium, and linear because it's proportional to displacement. If we express acceleration as the second derivative of position, we get this differential equation, an equation that says whatever our position function x of t is, it should have the characteristic that if we twice differentiate x with respect to time, we should get our original function back again, but with a negative k over m out front. Remember that a solution to a differential equation is not a proof. You don't have to justify your steps. You just need a solution that satisfies the requirements. This one we're going to solve by inspection, which is to say, can we just think of a function that fits the requirements? Well, yes, either a sine or a cosine function will work. I'm going to pick cosine here because I know I'm going to start the system at an initial position away from equilibrium. What requires some thought is the choice of coefficients. What can you put in front of the t so that when you take the derivative twice, you get a k over m out front? root k over m should do the trick. What are those other values, the a and the delta? Those are things I added when I looked at the Diffie q and I pulled that solution out of thin air. I added them because I don't know their values. Remember, the Diffie q just tells me the relationship between the function and the second derivative, nothing else. But there are lots of functions that would satisfy that differential equation. In fact, we can put any leading coefficient a on there, and our proposed x of t function would be a legitimate solution to the Diffie q, because when we differentiate, the a just hangs out in front. And in fact, the same can be said for the delta, the phase constant. If you don't believe me, you can try taking the derivatives yourself, and you'll see that they, they just hang in there, and we get our function back again with a negative constant out front. All this means is that we can stretch our solution function vertically, or we can shift it right to left, and it will still be a solution. So how do we determine those values? Through initial conditions. In this case, we know that the mass was stretched out to some initial displacement x0 and released from rest, so we can write a simple unshifted cosine function with amplitude x0 and it will have those characteristics of zero velocity at time equals zero. We've accomplished our first goal. We have a position function for the block. What about the period of oscillation? How long does it take for the block to complete a full cycle? The cosine function completes a cycle every two pi radians. So another way of phrasing the question is this. How much time does it take the argument of the cosine function to go from zero to two pi? How much time does it take? Well, when that much time has elapsed, we know that the time is equal to one period. That's the definition of the period, and this allows us to determine the actual value of the period, like so. So this is how you find the period of oscillation for a mass on a frictionless surface driven by a spring, but it's really a template for any simple harmonic oscillator. Here are the steps you should be able to identify in this derivation and apply in any oscillator derivation. 1. Express the dynamics of your oscillator in terms of a linear restoring force. That is to say, show that the tendency to return to equilibrium is proportional to the displacement from equilibrium. Step two, rewrite your expression as a differential equation. Three, solve the differential equation, usually by inspection. Four, use initial conditions to determine the values of parameters. Five, find the period of oscillation 
by saying that when the time is equal to one period, the argument has changed by 2 pi. And that's it. Happy oscillating.